You know, after I've played the bones, uh, very frequently, uh, people come up to me and say, gee, that was swell. When in the, how in the world did you ever happen to invent a thing like this? Well, of course, I didn't invent bones playing. As a matter of fact, the bones were probably the first musical instrument that was ever devised. Getting a, <clears throat> and it probably happened something like this, that people sat out in front of caves around the fire and somebody told a story while they were gnawing the meat off some kind of rib bones. And uh, when the story was finished, they'd uh, put, put their bones down and, and do some clapping. Well, uh, the fact that they had to put the bones down in the dirt, uh, di they didn't relish particularly. So <coughs> some smarty uh, uh, had an idea. And what he did was <coughs> take a couple of the bones that he'd gnawed the meat off of and put them between a couple of fingers so that he could hold them like this. And well, instead of clapping with his hands, he could do something like this and make just as much noise as he could clapping. And uh, not only that, but he could, he could go on eating at the same time. Well, that was swell. Then <coughs> he finally found that if he used two pairs of these, he, he could make more noise than with just one pair of bones. And you can't do this. Uh, for very long before you get a little whip in your arm and you, you can hear a, a triplet uh, uh, out of which you, you can make rhythm patterns along with the with this tapping thing. So they got so that they could tap and then they could do this uh, triplet and uh, the bones were off to the races. Well, this thing came down through history until uh, finally the first recording we have of bones playing was when a potter at the eastern end of the Mediterranean along about uh, 2000 BC made a vase and decorated it with a woman playing the bones. She had a pair of bones in each hand and uh, that picture was the, uh, as I say, the first documentation of Bones playing. <clears throat> well, during uh, the Middle Ages, uh, troubadours and junglers uh, who traveled around all over the place with a musical instrument hung over their shoulder had bones which they played. And uh, there were times uh, during the Middle Ages when uh, it, it, was, it was the law that uh, people who had leprosy would carry bones and use the, the rattle of the bones as a warning for people to keep away. Uh, but uh, that part of history of the bones uh, goes on until Finally, in Ireland, we have a record of a bones player uh, who played the bones about 750 A.D., and uh, that's as far as it got. There's just mention of the fact that uh, uh, there was this bones player. But in 1165, there was a description of a bones player uh, who uh, played in, this was in Ireland also. It was a little disparaging of his social status, but at least there was a, a person who played the bones. So this thing goes along until we get to the place where Shakespeare talks about the bones in Midsummer Night's Dream, Act 1, Scene 4. Tom Bottom says, I have an ear that appreciates music. Let's have the tongs and bones. So, uh, down through the history, the 